your seats right now. You are willing to keep your agreement. Give yourselves a round of applause. So did you guys enjoy the day yesterday? If you enjoyed the day yesterday, guess what? You're going to love today. Because you guys haven't seen anything yet. Guys, yesterday was a great day. We built a really, really good foundation that we can grow from. And today gets incredibly intense. Did you get a ton of information from me yesterday? Yes. Guess what's coming today? Two tons. Two tons. <laughs> Two tons. So what I need from you guys today is I need an incredible focus. I need you guys to have the ability to focus like laser beams today because it gets intense. I assure you at some level, every single one of you in this ballroom is going to go into information overload today. So some of you are already there. Now, when you get into information overload, when it starts to feel like a lot, sometimes the brain shuts down or those words, I can't pop into my brain. You just got to switch it to what, Renee? I must. If you stay in the conversation of I must, that means you must continue to always push forward. It doesn't become failure till you what? Till you quit, till you give up. Now, I did have a student ask me yesterday. They said, hey, man, coach, what's the deal with that chain up there on the screen breaking? I will tell you that that chain breaking represents a time in my life that was very, very difficult, where I could have allowed what happened in my life to be a breakdown. And instead of allowing it to be a breakdown, I chose to make it a breakthrough. Now, as we navigate through the day today, and you guys, and we continue to learn these wealth building, life changing principles, I want you guys to think about what that chain breaking means to you. And tomorrow we'll talk about it. So we've got to go out and we've got to find some community bankers. Now, Coach has already promised you a list of community banks, yes? Okay, just having the list of community banks doesn't mean they're the right bank to do business with. So we've got to go introduce ourselves to some community banks. So let's suggest now, now, when you call the community bank, number one, the first thing we do is we want to find out where the decision maker's at. So when I give you this list of community banks, you're going to call the community banks up on the phone and say, hey, you know, I'd like to develop a relationship with your bank. Where are your loan decisions made at? And if they say, well, our loan decisions are made right here in Tampa, but they were made at the branch on West Shore, guys, where are we going to go build our relationship at? The branch on West Shore. Now, when I call the branch on West Shore, I want to talk to the vice president of the commercial lending department. When I get the vice president of the commercial lending department on the phone, I'm going to let them know, I want to schedule a meeting with you and the decision maker in your bank. And when I come in, I'm going to want to know the bank's CAMEL score. I want to know your loan to deposit ratio. And I want to know your loss reserve ratios. I want to know your loan to deposit. I want to know your camel score, your loan to deposit ratio, and your loss reserve ratios. Okay, no, no worries. You want to know their camel score, their loan to deposit ratio, and their loss reserve ratios. What's what's all of we're getting ready to talk about? Now, if you're talking to the right bank, the person that you're talking to is going to say, I'm not authorized to give you that type of information, but I will schedule an appointment for you to speak with the bank president. Because that's the only one that can authorize to give that type of information. 
And if they're an investor-friendly bank and you start asking those types, you're number one, you're gonna find out real quick if they're an investor-friendly bank, okay? And, and number two, you start asking those types of questions to an investor-friendly bank, that person's gonna to say to you, hey, obviously you're the type of investor we wanna work with, I'll schedule you an appointment with the bank president. You'll know real quick. Now, when you sit down with that bank president, I wanna be very, very clear. His job or her job will be to eliminate you. You got one shot at this and one shot only. And if you blow it, you're not getting another shot. So when you sit down with that bank president, let's suggest that Debbie's the bank president. When I introduce myself to Debbie, I want to introduce myself to Debbie in a very, very professional manner. Now, I could throw you guys into a group exercise, and we could even have a contest, and we could have a table contest, and we could spend 30 minutes or an hour trying to come up with a really, really good introduction that would work, and I'm sure that you guys would come up with some great stuff, or I can just teach you at light speed right now and give you my introduction. Which one would you guys like? I knew that you'd say that. And guys, the, the, the beauty of working with me and working with my family and my team, guys, I got 13 years real world experience in doing this business. My mom has 15 years real world experience doing this business. Tim has 12, 13 years real world experience in doing this business. Guys, you're getting our lifetime of education. Thank God you don't have to spend a lifetime building this business. Now. So this is my professional introduction. The introduction that you use, you want it to get their attention immediately and you want to have the ability to give yourself 100% instant credibility. So it goes just like this. Hi Debbie, my name's Gregory. I represent Florida Relations Investment Group. Now that is a hypothetical name for classroom purposes, although in the state of Florida, I promise you that name is taken. <laughs> that name is actually taken in virtually every single state in the United States of America because I have taught this class in every single state in the United States of America. Or maybe not every, virtually every. So you're gonna come up with your own business name. Now if you're gonna use my personal name, I'll give you a stack of Greg Jr.'s cards. Now, you're going to come up with your business name. Hi, my name is Gregory. I represent Florida Relations Investment Group. We are investors. Over the next two years, We intend to purchase ten to twelve million in real estate. I'm interviewing community bankers today. to determine which ones will be a part of my power team and help me make that happen. In a moment, I'm going to repeat that for you guys. And listen, I want you guys to recognize at this moment in time, 
by right now that every single thing I have taught you this weekend is all 100% interconnected. Everything I taught you yesterday is connected to what I teach you today, is connected to what I teach you tomorrow, all the way back full circle to what I started teaching yesterday. Understand every single thing is a piece of the puzzle. L let me repeat this for you. Hi, my name's Gregory. I represent Texas Relations Investment Group. We are investors. Over the next two years, we intend to purchase, what's the number, guys? 10 to 12 million. You got to get used to saying those numbers. What's the numbers? 10 to 12 million. Listen to me. The first time you introduce yourself to somebody in the grocery store, at the restaurant, buying 10 to 12 million in real estate, you'll be like, 10 to 12 million? The second time you do it, the third time you do it, guys, it's going to get better. The fourth and fifth time you do it, you might start to believe it. Once your mind believes it can achieve, you can start to trust in yourselves. How many of you understand that it's going to take, Tony, a tremendous amount of trust in yourself, a tremendous amount of faith in yourself, a tremendous amount of courage? Guys, I promise. You've got to practice this introduction tonight. I want you walking in here tomorrow morning prepared to give me this introduction. Because guys, when you wake up Monday morning, that's when the true test begins. That's when the rubber hits the road. The bottom line here is how committed to the business are you? How bad do you want this for you and your family? I'm committed 10 to 12 million. I understand, baby. <laughs> that's a big commitment, isn't it? I like it. And I want you to practice this stuff. It, guys, in the third week of the elite action plan I give to the advanced training students, you are passing cards out everywhere that you go in the third week. The business card alone will bring more opportunity your way than what you could possibly handle. Just the business card. Now, hi, my name's Gregory. I represent Florida Relations Investment Group. We are investors. Over the next two years, we intend to purchase, what's the number? 10 to 12 million in real estate. I'm interviewing community bankers today. I'm interviewing mortgage brokers today. I'm interviewing licensed real estate agents today. I'm interviewing real estate attorneys today. I'm interviewing property managers. I'm interviewing CPAs today to determine which ones will be a part of my team to help me make that happen. Weston says, nice. Thank you. Guys, I have developed this introduction so that it is universal for everyone. Write, write that down. Now, during that introduction, I want to hand Debbie what? A business, card. a business card. You want to hand Debbie a very, very professionally designed business card. So tomorrow around lunchtime, guess what we will design? Business cards. Now, I will teach you to design a business card that the second you give it to Debbie and you introduce yourself to Debbie in this manner, it is going to activate a program in her brain called money. This business card will mean money to her. And no, the business card does not look like a $100 bill. That'd be cheesy. It's way more brilliant than that. And guys, when somebody sees a $20 bill laying on the ground, somebody sees a dollar bill laying on the ground, what do they do? They pick it up and they put it in their wallet or their pocketbook, they keep it. When I give you this card, guys, it's gonna mean money to you. And when it means money to you, what do you do? You keep the card. Now, when I introduce myself to Debbie and I hand her my business card, if she instantly doesn't go to her computer and Google my name, guess what I tell her to do? Hey, Debbie, I want you to, before we even get started in this whole interview and going over camel scores and stuff, I want you to pull up my website. I have 800 properties advertised for sale as we speak. Guys, she pulls up my website, she goes to my properties tab, and she sees that I have 800 properties advertised for sale. What does that instantly give me with her? Credibility. Instant credibility. Debbie, I do want you to know I am a master investor. I'm a part of the top 5% of elite investors in this country. I'm different than everybody else out there. Now, 
Before we get into the bank's CAMEL scores, what I'd really like to do is just talk to you about the market area here in the Tampa St. Pete area. I've brought in my zip code map. Now on this map, I've got all the hot spots, median price of houses, appreciation rates, and average days on the market. So when I go meet the community banker guys, what am I actually bringing with me? I'm bringing my zip code map. And I am going to give the banker financial education on market analysis. Now, I've had community bankers say to me at this moment in time, whenever I get the zip code map out, they're like, wow, Gregory, no investors ever shared this kind of information with me or anybody in my bank. There are other people within the bank that probably need to hear what you've got to say. Could we take the meeting from my office to the boardroom? What's the answer to that? Yeah. Cha-ching. <laughs> now I'm in the boardroom, guys, and I'm teaching 15 or 20 people in the bank. I've even had community bankers say to me at the end of the meeting, they're like, they come, they come over to the side and they go, Gregory, that was brilliant. Do you think I could get a copy of that zip code map? <laughs> what is my answer to that when they ask for a copy? Okay, okay. Right, so I'm actually proud of this group because 90% of the time they say, oh no, I'm not going to give it to them. And guys, go back to your definition of success. One's ability to influence human behavior that creates win-win situations that are beneficial to everyone. All influence must be backed up by data so that all decisions can be made based on logic. And make no mistake, David, I give it to him for free or her for free, but they're going to pay for it. Oh, good. How are they going to pay for it? Loans. Deals, loans, because I'm going to build a relationship. I say, you know what, Debbie, I knew that you would ask for this map. This one's for you. It's even got your name on it right here at the bottom. Because I knew that you were, I knew that by the end of this meeting that we would want to spend more time together. Now, hey, guys, go to your mastermind page and write this down. We, as investors, we are problem solvers. We are solution providers. We are to be of service. And what you guys want to do, those of you that truly, truly want to be successful at this business on a high level, become a part of the top 5% of master investors in this country, is you want to find people that are in related industries and related fields and help them grow their business. You learn to feed your power team. What's your power team going to do for you? They're going to feed you back. We're going to feed you back. Now, it, it, you may not be ready, Tim, to do this today, but you master seven areas of real estate, sir. You'll be ready to do this. See, I could even say to the community banker, I'd say, you know what? Yes, this map's for you. And um, what I'll do is I'll come back every 30 days and update the information, the median price of houses, the appreciation rates, the average days on the market. And as a matter of fact, what I'll do is I'll, I'll do a 30-minute training session on market analysis and maybe customer service because I'm a master at motivating people. And I'll bring pizza. I'll do that once a month. And I'll do a 30-minute training session on market analysis. And I'll do that for free. So now I'm in that bank every 30 days, updating the zip code map, doing a 30-minute training on market analysis. But what am I actually doing? <coughs> I'm building a relationship. Guys, th this is when you become on first name basis with the president of the community bank. Now, I have made myself valuable to Debbie. Debbie wants to do business with me. Now, when I'm going over the zip code map, I say, you know, Debbie, this X right here represents your bank. 
the other eight X's on the, on the page represent your competition. I do want you to know I'm interviewing you first. As soon as I find the right three, I'm done. I just put Debbie on notice that I am there to what? Eliminate her. Guys, when I go sit down with the community banker, my first number one goal is to eliminate them. Because if they're not the right bank, if they're not going to do business the way we want to do business, then guess what? I'm out of there. I'm not wasting my precious time spinning my wheels. Now, Debbie, I'm, I'm so excited that this is going to be a win-win relationship for us. And I want you to know that I've chosen for you to be one of my three banks. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to make three moves to improve your bank's CAMEL score. So here's the three moves. Write them down. Don't fight it. Just write it. Write them and then we'll talk about it. You want to become a core depositor at the community bank. You want to have a performing asset. that is a zero risk loan. i repeat that for you. You want to become a core depositor. You want to have a performing asset that is a zero risk loan. Now I'm going to explain all three of those to you. Number one, let's discuss becoming a core depositor. So when looking at a bank's CAMEL score, we learned yesterday the most important aspect of a bank's CAMEL score would be the bank's liquidity to position. Do you guys remember that from yesterday? In order for a bank to have a CAMEL score of a one, they would have to have a loan to deposit ratio of no greater than, 30, than 70%. In other words, if they've got $1 million of deposits, they want to see that the bank has only loaned out $700,000 of that money. Therefore, if 100% of the loans went into default, the bank would still be liquid. Does everybody understand? Now, how many of you want the insider, insider, insider trader information? as if I haven't been giving it to you all weekend long. Give me more. It's common. And guys, again, I just want you to recognize I'm teaching you stuff other investors don't know right now. That will give you a major advantage in the marketplace. In the stock market, insider trader information would send you where? Jail. To jail. In real estate, it just makes us what? Very rich. Very rich. All right, pay, pay close attention. Let me define a core deposit. See, even if somebody knows what a bank's CAMEL score is, they don't have any idea what a core deposit is. The FDIC will only consider a bank's core deposits. What that means is a core deposit is any deposit, Susan, from $1,000 up to $100,000. Let me repeat that. A core deposit is any deposit from $1,000 up to $100,000. So if you deposit $1,000 in your community bank, are you a core depositor? Yes. yes. Now, if you deposit $100,000 in your community bank, are you a core depositor? Yes. How many? One, but they'll count 100 grand. You deposit $200,000 in your community bank into one account, are you a core depositor? Yes. How many times? One time, up to 100 grand. So the community bank will not get to, will not be allowed to add 200 grand to their 
core deposits, they're only going to be allowed to add what? 100 grand. So what the community bank would prefer that you do, Tim, is a community bank would prefer that you make two separate deposits and two separate accounts, 100 grand each. Now you've became a core depositor how many times? Twice. There's a reason for this, and the reason is if somebody deposited $5 million into one account and the FDIC allowed that all to go towards their core deposits, that could dramatically affect a bank's CAMEL score. And if somebody withdrew $5 million all at one time, that also could dramatically affect a bank's CAMEL score. And the FDIC knows that the normal person is not going to deposit more than hundred grand in the bank. So they're only going, so you could, you could call it normal depositors, but they call it core depositors. And that's the core of their business. Is this making sense, guys? Yes. So it, it, I just hold that thought. Write it down so you don't lose it. Now, I also want to have a performing asset that's a zero risk loan to the bank. So. What I'm going to do, Debbie, is I, you, I really, this is going to be a great win-win relationship for both of us. So I'm going to write you out this check for $1,000, and I want you to deposit that into an account in a CD and give me a receipt stating that I now have a certificate of deposit with your bank. Susan, I give them $1,000 and they put it into a CD. Have I become a core depositor? Yes. Now, the second they give me my receipt, Winston, that says that I have $1,000 on deposit, I say, you know what? I want to borrow my money. Even if you have bad credit, will they let you borrow your own money? Okay? Because if you don't pay them back, what will they do? They're going to keep your money. This is a zero risk loan to the bank. Now, when you borrow that money, you want to borrow it for 12 months. Now, I do, I'll be very clear here. When you put money into a CD, you might earn somewhere around 2%. And then when you borrow your own money, they're going to charge you 3%. So the net effect to you is going to be about 1%. And on $1,000 over a 12-month period of time, that will cost you 11 bucks. <laughs> oh. Now, and it's tax deductible. Some, I heard that over there. That's good. Now, how many community banks do I need a relationship with? Three. Three. Now, and, let's, and let's back up for a second. So if I become a core depositor and I have a performing asset at that community bank that is a zero risk loan, does that affect every aspect of a bank's CAMEL score? That affects their capital accuracy. That affects their asset quality. That affects their management practices. They say, man, this lady Debbie, she's brilliant. She makes loans that are zero risk. That affects their loan to deposit ratio, their liquidity position. One move affects every aspect of a bank's CAMEL score. Now, how many community banks do I need a, 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 a relationship with? Three. Three. So I went to one community bank, I gave them a thousand dollars, and then I borrowed it. The whole amount. The whole thousand. So Cheryl, how much do I have in my pocket right now? A thousand bucks. So I go to another community bank. I go through the interview process. I give that bank a thousand dollars, and what do I do? I borrow it. I go to a third community bank. I give them the same thousand dollars, and what do I do? I borrow it. I've just became a core depositor with a performing asset that is a zero risk loan with three community banks. And I did it all with $1,000. Can you say cha-ching? How many of you are learning something right now? Yeah, guys, I'm teaching you stuff other investors don't know. So I had a student one time that, that came to the front of the room, because in a moment you're gonna, we'll have open questions here in a second. And a student come to the front of the room and they said, Coach, I just want to know, why is it when I go to the bank, nobody in the bank tells me this stuff? Okay, maybe. They're not financially sound. No, 
It's not that they're not financially sound, guys. The FDIC will not let them tell you this stuff because that would be considered a, a manipulation of their CAMEL score. Aha. Uh-huh. So, Ryan, when I sit down with the bank president and I start giving this information, I mean, their eyes are going to get this big around. They're going to be like, man, this guy Tony's my new best friend. You better take me to play golf, too, <laughs> where I want to play. Do you guys get it? The bank can't give me this information, but when I go offer it to them, they're like, where have you been all my life? Do, do you, are there any more investors like you out there? Yeah, I got 22,000 of them. Is this making sense, guys? Yeah. When you can help a banker improve their CAMEL score, when you can help a banker um, be, you can become a core depositor with zero risk loans, this is when the floodgates of money will open up for you. This is when they'll roll out the red carpet for you. This is when you can get loans done, loan to value, no money down. In other words, if it's a $300,000 house that I get for $240,000, I walk through the doors of the bank, I don't have to put any money down. That does not work at Bank of America. That does not work at Wells Fargo because those are national banks and regional banks that are going to do what? They're going to sell the loan. Because my community banker doesn't sell the loan, it doesn't have to meet that underwriter guideline. Is everybody with me here? Now, So let's, let's, let's talk about this community bank process for a second. So let's say that you're a student in the room that's got an 800 credit score um, and, and, you, and you don't have any income. Are you going to be able to walk through the doors of a community bank, build a relationship with them to where they can give you, will give you loans for properties? No. You've got to have income to back up the fact that you want to buy that property. Your income to debt ratio has to be in line. That is why it is vital, guys, that you start with what types of strategies first? Earned income strategies. Let's find properties in foreclosure. Let's assign them. Let's flip the properties that are in foreclosure. Let's master the mobile home strategy that I will teach you tomorrow. And let's start making 20 grand a month. You start making 20 grand a month, that's when you become an employee of your own corporation and you pay yourself a paycheck. Now, when you walk through the doors of the community bank, you're no longer self employed because you got a paycheck with with a check stub. Now, you pay yourself a paycheck and you take taxes out of your paycheck, who is now responsible for your benefits package? Who's responsible for your insurance? Who's now in control of your financial future? Now, if you're a student in the room that's got a 480 credit score, do you have any business walking through the doors of a community bank trying to build a relationship with them? No. What do you need to do first? You need to start with the same types of strategies, guys. Build stacks of cash and pay off what? Pay off your debt. Let's say you're a student in the room that's got a 730 credit score, but you got a whole bunch of bad debt. Do you need to go build a relationship with a community bank? No. First step would be master earned income strategies, build stacks of cash, pay off all that bad debt. When are you going to have more influence on the community banker? 730 score and higher and no debt? Yes. That's when you want to go build the relationship. So the bottom line here is that as I take you through the process, every one of you plug into the system depending on where you're at in life financially. Does that make sense? Several of you in the room are ready to go build the relationships with the community banks right now. And when you go build that relationship with the community bank, how many of you would like to have somebody like me come do the interview for you? Yeah, that's when you walk out of the bank and the banker's going, hey, Winston, when are we going to see deals from you? You're the person we want to do business with. Now, if you have a personal question about credit, if you have a personal question about credit that's personal to you, let's keep that personal. Because when you come up to the front of the room and say, well, I got a personal situation that might help everybody in the room, it doesn't help everybody in the room. It helps you. And when you ask me personal type credit questions, I got to drill down and ask you multiple other questions to really get to the root of the situation. 
I, I just don't have time to air that out from the front of the room. So if you've got an overall general question about credit or an overall general question about what I just taught about community banks, head right up to the front of the room. Come on up. Come line up. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'd like to know with the $1,000 core deposit, deposit CD plan, how quickly do you do each transaction? Like all in the same day, in a week, in a month? So you could all do it in, I mean, I can go from one bank to another bank to another bank. Just in the same day? Same day. Okay. And, 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 and check this out. I don't even have to bring a check with me while I'm at the bank because I could say, you know what, Winston, since Weston, I keep getting that wrong. That's okay. No, but you know, practice makes permanent. I, I, want to, I want to permanently learn your name the right way. Okay, so you gotta, you gotta be willing to correct me. So Weston, so you're the bank I wanna do business with, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna call my bank, um, get, give me the routing number and wire transfer information, and I'm just gonna have them wire transfer a thousand bucks to you, you put it into a CD, and then I wanna borrow it. Now, I really don't wanna to touch the money, so just put that into a savings account. Money is no longer paper guys it's nothing but electronic current then i can go to the next bank and do the same thing and i don't have to carry around a thousand bucks okay great question we'll get stay right here stay right here okay uh my first is just a clarification sure this uh community bank strategy is that to build your stacks of cash to earn income so Practices. no the, and great question i'm glad that you've asked for clarity do i actually when i'm doing the process of assignment a contract do I need a bank for that? No. See, I get a property under contract and I assign it to another investor that's got to go to the community bank. So when I'm doing the earned income strategies, guys, I'm not using my money, I'm not using my credit. I'm building stacks of cash to pay off all my bad debt so then I can go build the relationship with the community bank. Okay, I understand. And the second thing was, we were talking about core deposits uh, and the limit of 100 grand. Um, so if you make two deposits of 100 grand to the same account, so separate accounts, does that count as? Got to be separate accounts. Separate accounts. Separate accounts. Thank you. Excellent. Great clarification questions. Yes, sir. My question being, uh, like when you're talking about presenting to community banks, you talk about all the deals and everything like that, and when you have an asset, what about us just starting out? We want to go to the community bank when they have five properties or something like that. How, how would we approach something like that? So you... So you have five properties already as rental properties, yeah. and, and um, so you could go to the community. You could consolidate those all under one loan with your community bank. Um, you could refinance them. I'm, so Steve, I'll sit down with you and talk with you one on one and, and find out what it is that we're actually wanting to accomplish. Oh, okay. Sorry, I that no, no, it's okay. That's no, it's a great, it's a great question. So this is the best way for me to really share this with my students to where they say, okay, I really get it. I really get it. Um, so here's what you want to do when you walk into the community bank and so you're going to walk in there with an income statement you're going to walk in there with a financial statement all of your investment properties are going to show on that financial statement you'll walk in there um, with credit applications already filled out and copies of your credit reports so they don't have to pull them here mr banker here's who i am so your your properties would be included in that portfolio does that make sense and hey Here's my business card, pull up my website. I have 800 properties advertised for sale as we speak. And, and, I, and I know I just kind of touched on that. How many of you'd like to wake up on Monday morning and have websites with 800 properties advertised for sale? You, some of you will. Good, good, good stuff. So guys, these guys had great questions. We need a big 10 guys to keep the energy going today. Hold on, hold on. It's your a 10 on three. One, two, three, your a 10. Yeah, guys, this is when, this is when some, it really starts to sink in and you realize the value of financial education. Um, by, by the end of the day today, guys, by the end of the day today, everything that I teach you today is, is earth-shattering, mind-blowing stuff. I haven't even got to the good stuff yet. By the end of the day today, you will absolutely know in your heart of hearts it will be 100% logical. I'll back it up with data. You will absolutely know that the advanced training classes are the right pathway for you. It'll actually just be a, 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 a no-brainer for you. Because I just want you to think this one segment that I'm teaching saves you hundreds of hundreds of thousands of dollars. That, the, 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 the cost of not getting the financial education will be far greater than the investment to get it. 
I can assure you of that. And I know everybody's starting from different places, so we'll strategize with each one of you to make sure that you have a plan that works for you. Does that sound good? 